What's up, YouTube? Race Nation TV here. Welcome to the channel. Uh, finally, I'm talking about IndyCar racing. It's kind of exciting uh, to finally be talking about IndyCar racing this season. Uh, it's something I'm waiting for. And as you can see, the Coda Open Test is on, but they're not doing anything because there was a, a weather delay and they can't really go on track. It's too cold. It's like 40 degrees in Texas right now. Actually, kind of glad I didn't go. So something interesting I want to talk about today was this interesting, these interesting couple things we found out yesterday about the dri some drivers being against the aero screen. Uh, it's definitely something that I've heard before. It's not something new to me seeing this uh, go over Twitter and uh, be an article in Indie Star. But um, I said last night on Twitter that this was going to be the two most important days for IndyCar this year because of the aero screen testing and what's going to go on. Uh, this is the first real test with 25 cars. All the drivers get to take it on. Uh, before this, I think it was Newgarden, Dixon, um, and then the McLaren cars that got to try this air screen out. I don't, you know, we, now we get all the drivers, and I don't think the drivers that were critical before uh, they drove it, like Connor Daly, I don't think they've gotten to drive it yet. So this is going to be, it's, I definitely thought it was going to be interesting uh, to see what those drivers had to say. Yesterday, uh, an article went up on IndyStar by Nathan Brown uh, called Aero Screen Still Divisive Across Indy Car Paddock. And it's not new. I've heard Connor Daly's been against it. Um, I heard, like, last week that they saw the rain in the forecast, and some of the drivers that don't like the aero screen were hoping it would rain and it would show uh, some flaws in the aero screen. Um, not that these drivers are against safety that it, or the looks. Like, some of the people that criticize it most have been against the looks, which I don't understand. Um, it's not that the drivers are against safety uh, or the looks. They're again, I mean, they're kind of skeptical like most of us have been. I mean, I know when it came out, I was skeptical because for implementing it all the way through 2020 without the majority of on-track testing that it's had, it hasn't had a lot. Now, to have it implemented for the full season, I think that's definitely very, that's a very risky move on IndyCar's part. And I don't think enough testing has been done. We have the two-day test here, and then we have a Texas test, and what... Realistically, we have three wait three weeks until the first race. We had a Sebring test earlier in the year, but not everybody has had their aero screens fitted until probably a good week or two ago. All the teams have their aero screens. They've been fitted the cars. Now we get this open test. Now the teams, what, what, the thing is, they don't have enough test. To me, they don't have enough testing time to implement this full season. It's not back in the '90s where you could implement something and the teams could go day by day and do it. They have limited testing days. They can't have it on track as much as they probably should. And here we are. So this two-day CODA test, like I said last night on Twitter, is two of the most important days of 2020 for IndyCar because it's going to show, it'll either show the flaws in the air screen or it's just better for worse. It'll show the air screen if it's good or not, if this was a smart idea or not. So I'm going to read some of the things the drivers had to say about the air screen in this article because I think it's very interesting. And um, it's just something to keep in mind while watching the test. Now, obviously, Max Chilton, who took off the rest of the ovals after missing the Indy 500 because of the danger, he said he's a big advocate of it, and he would have he would have honestly uh, been okay with the halo. Uh, so, obviously, Max Chilton's a big advocate for it. Another thing to keep in mind is a lot of drivers uh, kind of probably are going to watch what they say about the aero screen because you don't want you don't want the whole field going out there and saying a bunch of negative things about the aero screen. Because that just, that's just a bad look on the series. That being said, drivers like Connor Daly, hey, he's not been afraid to voice his opinion to the public on the air screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the article. Daly's biggest concerns, which mirrors the uncertainties of the paddock, even those who have embraced it more, are with cooling and air circulation. Now, we saw the vents on the front of the cars um, to create even more airflow, and the drivers now have tubes on their helmets. Um, and I feel like there's a couple more, I feel like there's some NACA ducks to be explored in different things, but still, you're not getting the same cooling that you would with an open cockpit IndyCar, obviously. So, uh, the big concerns are cooling and getting too hot inside the car, which, um, I remember Connor said something about, um, how hot the inside of a stock car was when he made his start at Road America, and now things in IndyCar are looking similar. So, to an IndyCar and a stock car being similar heat-wise, it's just, um, it's kind of interesting to look at and to think about. Connor also said, but we still need to see what angles do those need to be at? Is it effective at 75 miles per hour on a road course instead of 220 on an oval? 
Additionally, there's concern about visibility during races that require long, longer stints on the track or those where rainfall. And then obviously rain is the forecast and we're still buffering and you know the stream is still uh, paused because it's raining and it's cold. Connor said, I'm nervous. Connor said, I'm nervous when we run 90 laps of Iowa and I'm not able to see all that well. That's something I'll have to get comfortable with. And Ed Carpenter agreed. Visually, they're clean. I have no problems with the safety gains for protect protecting us from debris. But I do need to get comfortable with just how bad the vis visibility is going to be at the end of a stint. Now, th I thought that was the most interesting thing to me. Is he He's thinking when they run nine, like the longer stints, when you run 90 laps at Iowa, and what's the visibility from the air screen? We know, we know about the tear-offs, right? But the driver can't pull tear-offs from the front of the windscreen. It's too far. You can't make that work. Usually they just pull windscreens from their visor. And what's the visibility going to be like out of the aero screen after 90 laps? A long stint is what basically what they're trying to talk about. Um, and then even, like he said, you know, he has no problem. Like I, I said, you know, he had no problems with the safety aspect of it. I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody can argue that, I mean, some people, obviously, on uh, the social media... But I don't think a lot of people in the panic can say, oh, we don't want head protection. We don't need head protection. Uh, it's, uh, I'm old school. We don't need head protection. Like, I don't, through the paddock at least, I don't think that's a problem. I think the problem is that it's not been tested on track. You can do all the simulator testing you want, but there's not gonna, it's not gonna be the same as real on track testing. And then they also talked about rain. Um, and, I think they said it was productive at the test. You know, they're trying to use Rain-X or trying to, you know, do different things. Um, and this is a problem in IMSA racing with, you know, closed cockpit cars. But they have windshield wipers. You're not able, you're not going to be able to install a windshield wiper on an Indy car with the air screen. With the way that it has to be angled, how, how small it has to be, you're not going to be able to do it on a single seater. You can't have uh, windshield wipers. So what are they going to do? Now, Graham Rahal and Santino Ferrucci... Uh, Graham said he liked it, but I think Graham was more talking on the basis of he didn't, he didn't want to, the, the drivers are tr trying to support Jay Fry in the series, so not to make a big stink about it. That's basically what he said. So he really gave no input on, uh, the device itself. He said he liked it, and then let's not, guys, let's not talk about it because that's a bad look. Santino Ferrucci liked it because he can sit higher in the seat. Now, I, Graham and Santino's approach versus Connor's. I like Connor's approach now better. I mean, you have to me. You have to question these things. You're the one going out and driving 200 miles per hour in an Indy car, and if you have questions about the device, question it. I know. I know. Like Graham's probably been working with Indy car behind the scenes and doesn't want to say stuff publicly, but it's been proven. If you have safety concerns as a driver. IndyCar doesn't always listen. How do you get them to listen? You share it publicly. I think that's, it's just, some people, you could say something about, you know, don't say anything in the public about the aero screen because it's a bad look for the series. But like when the series has a history of not listening, put it public. That's how you do it. So I really enjoy Connor's, uh, I enjoy hearing Connor's opinions. He might be wrong. Jay Fry might be right. I mean, everything, the aero screen might be perfect. But I just to see Connor complaining, I like that. I enjoy that. I, that's it's good to me. That's good for the series. You know, it's keeps them keeps them honest. Now, Jay Fry said he was aware of the concerns and he accepts the constructive criticism. And you know, he said the same thing. We get a twenty-five car test to actually test out the aero screen and see how it performs. And um, there was an interesting thing I saw on Twitter last night. Just to kind of wrap this all up, that. At some events, if they choose to, if they can, um, at some events, they would take the screen off and run just a halo, which would probably at road courses. Now, what the thing about the aero screen is, that's to me, that's interesting because if you run a road course and it rains, to have the option to be able to take the aero screen off and just run the halo. Now, the halo has its flaws. I don't like the halo, but the halo doesn't work on ovals, so it'd have to be done on a road course and if you do it in the rain, I think that makes sense. I make that I th I think that makes sense. I think that just makes sense. Now that was my uh, that was my little ramble on about the aero screen, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, definitely more IndyCar content to come. I'll probably be at St. Petersburg. Don't hold me to that, but um, I'll be producing more IndyCar content as the season goes on, and I'll see you in the next one.